Hello, it is me, your head on show big boy Monsieur M. Kotaï. I just want to take a moment to congratulate Exiled Influon is recent video, and say that you should take the time to subscribe, like, and throw a comment out there. Failure to do so will result in me personally adding 12 more bugs to the next chapter of Dead by the Light. Ok, I leave you now. Enjoy the video. P.S. Don't take any advice from me when it comes to the hag, because he got wrecked by those damn Korean players back in the day. Hey Jane guys, Adam here. What we're doing today is we're going to actually showcase ways that we can counter one of the least popular killers to face, and that is the hag. The hag is a killer that's very strong without add-ons, without perks, which can be really, really strong in the right hands. Less experienced players, particularly, have a really tough time of dealing with her. So let's jump in to some basic tips, tricks, some intermediate tips and tricks, and hopefully we can maybe do some advanced ones as well. But let's begin at the very, very start, shall we? Right then, so the basic attributes of the hag is that she's a small killer. She is slower than other killers. Most killers are 115% movement speed in comparison to the 100% movement speed of a survivor. The hag is actually 110%. So it's like a 5% difference there, which just allows survivors potentially, if the hag decides to pursue in an orthodox manner without using her power, it means the survivor can uh, theoretically run that killer in for longer. She also has a smaller tower radius of 24 meters, which means that she has an easy chance of catching people off guard. She can catch people doing objectives, not looking around properly. And she can also make really good use of perks such as monitor abuse, which reduce that tower radius even further. The hag's power revolves around her using traps in which she can teleport to. The traps will be triggered whenever a survivor runs through or extremely nearby to that trap location. What will happen is, with any add-ons, that will change that slightly. A base, a default, a what is called a phantasm will erect out of the floor. It'll look exactly like the hag and whatever skin she's got at the moment. That'll come out of the floor and the hag will, if she's close enough, will be given not only notification, but the option to teleport straight to it. An experienced hag, a hag that knows the power very well, will always have um, their button, or their, I should say their finger, set to a button ready to teleport immediately. What will happen is an experienced hag, the survivor will run for that trap, and immediately, once that's triggered, within a fraction of a second, they'll go slam, control key, or whatever other key they're bound, it's quite often it's a mace wheel, and they'll immediately teleport and immediately hit their attack button. Because when the survivor runs through that trap, when the hag teleports, the phantasm will actually, will actually follow the survivor. So when they teleport, the hag should be aimed directly at that survivor and so long as it hits straight away should be able to get an immediate hit in. That range between mid out the teleport is fairly fairly big at default and that can be increased by add-ons so it's very tricky at times to know exactly when the hag can and can't teleport to that location but if the, if the hag is at the other side of a map let's say good chances are that you can't teleport if you're on the other side so you can use that as well as an opportunity to bypass her, her teleports but we'll get on to the more precise counters to her very shortly anyway furthermore to her power let's talk more about what the hag's actually really strong at and the hag is very very strong on small maps and maps that have a lot of choke points maps at least in my opinion such as midwich such as the game potentially such as larry's uh hawkins and other maps of this ilk i find are a lot stronger for the hag than a lot of other killers and i find their maps are a lot better for her than other maps available. The case in point really is that the, all these maps are something in common and that is the fact that there's a lot of line of sight blockers for the, for the survivors and there's a lot of choke points, areas where survivors will generally funnel towards and it's very easy to lock down specific areas. Let's say you've got someone on a hook compared to something like let's say Colwyn Farm where it's big open, you've got a lot of cornfields and stuff like that. It's a lot harder to lock down a hook area in that location and it would be let's say in Larry's where there's like say maybe two doors in and out of that hook so it's a lot easier to put, uh, put your traps down in strategic locations it's a lot easier to put you down in high traffic locations it's a lot easier to just like and it's a lot harder for survivors to be able to see where traps are but of course the hag isn't all powerful and there are ways to count the hag 
we have in our categories here that I that I've listed up. We got perks, we got items, we got maps, and we got different playstyles. In those four different categories, there are ways around the hag, ways that you can outperform the hag or make you have the advantage over the hag. Let's go into some of those, shall we? Okay, so perks are a really obvious one, and there's one particular obvious perk that everyone will bring up whenever you mention countering the hag, and that is urban evasion. What the urban evasion does is it allows you to crouch at the same speed as a survivor is able to walk. It, all, it means that you're able to move around the map in a, in a more efficient manner. It, it means that you're able, you're able to save people at the hook in a more efficient manner. Urban evasion does as its own caveats. It can, it can make you walk at or well, basically crouch at 100% speed rather than sprinting around the map and being even more efficient. But it will allow you to unhook people in a slightly more speedy manner without um, setting off the traps. Usually what happens is when, some, when a hag player hooks somebody, they will usually put a trap right underneath that hook. Survivors will do one of two things usually. They'll either sprint right off that hook and set a trap off. The hag will suddenly teleport, knock those people down, and you'll suddenly have maybe two slugs or one person still on the hook and one person who's being picked up for a second hook. Or what will happen is you'll have somebody sprint towards the hook and then they will gauge when it's safe to start crouching. And that can that can be... There's usually a big deviation between survivors when they think it's safe to and when other people think it's safe to. Some people will crouch an incredibly long duration to get, to get you off the, the hook. Other people will really throw across the wind and come very, very close and then begin crouching. Urban evasion just alleviates some of that pressure. It'll mean that you can get sort of like a nice middle ground where you, you can kind of run, begin crouching, crouching at any kind of distance and you can still sort of do well and, and unhook that person in a timely manner. So urban evasion is very nice. But its uses, mm, the kind of over overhyped at times, depending on how you want to use it. Kindred comes next and to me, Kindred is an absolute godsend when it comes against the hag. Just being able to know what kind of hag player you're up against is really really nice because generally speaking and there's probably are more like uh, more categories in this but from what i see generally the, mo the two most common hag people they'll either hook somebody and immediately trap her underneath their feet because that's the most efficient manner of getting another kill straight away if someone goes for an alt altruistic play or they'll probably do the big brain and probably what i think is maybe the smarter idea and that is to actually um hook somebody move away a little bit and trap a couple of high trappy locations so if you know that the survivors are on one side of the map you can maybe set a few traps up that will feed into them coming for the save from one direction or maybe two directions that is for me the more, the more clever way of setting up your traps it will allow you to know whether that hag is doing first option or the second option and you can kind of gauge if to save your um, teammate from that really strong i think underrated um, stick it on if you hate the hag. I think it's arguably, arguably the better perk out of the two so far. But it's situational, they do two different things, so it's one of those. Next up, I've got Dead Hard on here, but it's really, it's just any exhaustion perk is going to allow you against any killer that is um, at a slower speed than normal. Have a significant advantage. Dead Hard is a big one though, because if you set a trap up and the hag it immediately teleports, Dead Hard will, depending on your reaction speed, it will give you potentially an option to survive that encounter. The Dead Hard is really strong. Spring Burst also will just give you that option. Spring Burst is actually an interesting one, because Spring Burst, if you 99 your Spring Burst, like I recommend a lot of people do, if you don't know what 99 in Spring Burst is, it's basically, once you get exhausted by your Spring Burst to start with, Allow it to recover, only to 99% recovery. What you want to do is you want to enable yourself to be able to um, stop sprinting, let off the button, or I do that because I'm by playing control with survivor, but let off the button once you just sprint, so I say you shift, you'll release shift, you'll stop being exhausted. You can then immediately use your spring burst and run off. That's 99 in your spring burst, and it's very strong against the hag as well. It allows you to do something with the dead hard. If you, um, if you set a trap, you have that potential to quickly exhaustion gone sprint away and get away from that location before the hag teleports and gains distance on you instead you're going to gain distance on the hag um but spring burst also be good because of a reduced terror radius um along with perks like money pro views like i keep mentioning what that allows you to do is it just grants you a little bit of uh, luxury a reduced terror radius often allows the hag to get closer to you than is you know is like comfortable 
Prim Burst LA to regain that distance that that killer gained on you from that reduced terror radius. And that in itself is pretty damn strong. So you got two kind of options there to use it. Use it as you will. Um, live balance landing. Both pretty good against that. One that some people don't really think is actually spongeable, and it's for the same reason I brought up about Spring Burst. And it, it is all to do with her reduced terror radius. I think Spongeable will just allow you to know if the Hag player is coming up nearby. If you've seen some of my Hag gameplay as well, I do actually recommend like running Dark Devotion with her. Tinker is also pretty good, very few got the right setup. So there are a lot of like terror radius based gimmicks and um, uses with the Hag. Spongeable allows you to bypass that and know when she's looking at you and just gives you that little bit of a notification just to be more aware of your surroundings. Just so yeah, those are kind of your basic perks. There are more. There's things that say distortion might be good because again, because of monetary abuse and because of the prevalence of her radius changing perks on the hag, she does also run nurses calling fairly often. So something like distortion might be able to, well, yeah, it will actually counter that perk. Whether you think distortion is a worthy perk or a poor perk system, that is up to you, but it is technically a counter. So have a look for your perk list, just see what you think might work against the hag, her weaknesses and her strengths, and yeah, let's try them out, there's plenty there, and I'm sure you'll figure out more than I will say as well, so have a look at them. So next up, let's look at items, and here I'll put on a basic map, which our base does not allow you to see hag traps, but if you was to put on a red twine, unlocks ability to track the killer's belongings, this includes trapper and the hag, Anything that sort of has traps, you'll be able to see them with the red twine offering or with your rainbow map. As you can see there, it looks ability to track the killer's belongings. It's the uh, second last bullet point. Another big counter is your flashlight. Flashlights, when you point them at the hag trap, will actually remove the trap off the map entirely, which is very, very nice indeed. Flashlights are a major counter to the hag. All right, now let's get into some playstyles. These things are how you will actually perform in the game, the things that you will do in the game. So let's go to the first one. The first one is actually pressuring the traps. This playstyle or this gameplay tip involves you being aware of when the hag is placing traps, where she's placing the traps, keeping that in your noggin. And then when the situation presents itself is to actually purposely run through that area. Good times to do this is when the hag actually moved across the map to different areas. It's actually really strong to do as well early on in the game. It's good when she picks up somebody off the floor because you can't teleport at all when, you, when she does that. And anytime she's distracted by anything else. Very strong to do if you haven't been hooked yet. Let's say if she's in a chase with somebody who's on the dying, who's on their, um, their death hook. It's actually really beneficial just to run through some traps. Just distract her, give her something else to think about. Just make her aware that the number of traps on the map is reducing. Therefore, her influence on the map is reducing. Next tip here is preventing free gen scenarios. This is important for any killer in the game, but it's in particularly very important against someone like Hag. 10 traps around a free general location, that is a lot of traps. That is a lot of choke points. Be aware of where you're doing generators. Make sure that you're splitting generators up. Make sure you're trying to get like middle generators done first. If you can get some middle generators done first and maybe like do a one on one side, one on the other side. That will almost, I'm pretty sure it will guarantee that there's not a free gen setup. And if you're not sure what a free gen setup is, it's literally just free generators anywhere on the map which are very, very close together. What you don't want is to reduce the map size basically. Like you start a game and your map is very, very big, there's seven generators. You want to make sure that all map size is kept the same. You want to make sure there's a generator left over here and a generator left over here at the end of your game. That's what you want to make sure. You don't know. You don't want all your generators to be all the way down here. You don't want your map to be there. You want your map to be all the way up there. If you catch my drift. Another tip, very simple one here. It's just to make sure they're holding down your crash button if you're on the hook. A uh, hag trap will actually be set off if you're if you're saved and you're not holding in crouch. It's so easy to set the hag trap off that it's not even funny. <laughs> Just uh, if you're getting saved, make sure you're holding in crouch down and make sure you're keeping it held down as you're moving away from the area. If the hag didn't place a trap down, then don't worry about it. But if she did underneath you, make sure you're holding it down. Don't throw your teammate under the bus who's just come to save you. Make sure that you're backing your teammate up that's come to support you and make sure you're supporting them in return. And then to flip that entirely, 
make sure that if you're going for a save make sure that you are crouching towards that hook unless you know for certain otherwise that the hag has not placed a trap underneath it make sure you sprint it towards that hook of course make sure you get into that location as quick as you can but then once you've reached a fair distance let's say five meters or so maybe a little bit more than that maybe a little bit less uh, make sure you hit your hole in that uh, your crate button which is default control on your keyboard if you're playing on pc and just slowly move towards that hook save them keep that crate button down as you save make sure you keep it down as you're moving away from the hook as well okay here's a tip from a hack player or at least a former hack player when you reach a pallet loop or any sort of toll with a looping mechanic to it the hag will be at its best if it starts to place a trap down in the most optimal spot on that loop Make sure that if they uh, the hag starts to place traps down, make sure you're not just stay in that loop for no reason. Placing a trap down does require at least a second of the hag's time, so make sure you're maximizing that time by running away and trying to get to another tile ASAP. Remember the hag is slower than any other killer, which then grants you a little bit more time on top of that to get to somewhere else. And a little bit of a contradiction here. Some hag players will actually pretend to place traps on the ground and cancel it midway through and try and start hunting you down immediately. Be aware of that. Make sure that if you make the choice to disengage a loop, make sure you've got your camera set on that killer. Make sure you're aware of what the killer's doing. Allow a little bit of time just to make sure you see the animation of the hag starting to place a trap. Maybe start to move away from the loop, but make sure you're aware of what they're doing. Keep your eye on the killer. So two little tips there for you. But the big one is just be aware of the kill and keep your eyes on the prize and um, don't fall in the trap, no pun intended, of letting the hag mind game your way from a loop which would have actually been safe for a moment. And here's something that we wish we always knew from the start. We've, we've all probably made the mistake of running towards the basement location against the hag. And oh boy is it fun. The hag is arguably the strongest killer in the basement. Try and avoid the basement if you can. The moment the hag gets you in the basement, you're gonna you're looking at a trap underneath your feet. You're looking at a trap at the bottom of the stairs. You're looking at a trap on top of the stairs. You're looking at maybe traps moving out of the actual basement um, location. It's gonna be really really hard for your teammates because it's such a choke point. Like literally like everything about it is just a one big giant prolonged choke point. You saw you point several traps there in a single corridor. It's going to be very hard for you to efficiently bypass all those traps in a timely manner and save somebody. So don't do it in the basin where it's even stronger. Right guys, we're getting towards the end of the uh, the guide now. So finally, what I want to touch on is actually hag trap locations, which is the uh, the bread and butter of the hag player pretty much. Knowing where to trap, when to trap them, really, really important to their game and all make them really deadly. So knowing where they are, where they're most likely to be, is going to allow you to be able to more efficiently care of the hag and reduce the influence on the game that she will have. So we'll start with some basic trap locations. So the first traps I really want to show you is what I call just your standard pallet traps. These are whenever like a standard pallet loops in play. Uh, a hag player will generally place a trap either one side or the other of the uh, the pallet. What this will allow them to do is quite often the um, survival will run into that, run to the other side of it. The trap will will erupt out the ground and the survivor will they'll usually drop the pallet and they will quite often vault straight back over the strength of this trap is that it's very simple and a hag player will actually be very patient they will actually wait to see whether the survivor vaults back over or whether they actually try and loop it or whether they will actually try and move away from that loop entirely they're vaulting back over a good hag will be patient wait for that indication and they will plan whether to teleport or not Quite often, these traps will actually reduce a 50-50 chance of tap point hitting to a 100% chance. If the survivor vaults over, the hack player just needs to run forward and just, just hit them, depending on how close they are. If the player decides to start running around the loop in a normal manner, all the hack player needs to do is start looking as if they are going to be looping around or moving around to the other side where the survivor currently is, and try and force them back towards the trap. The hack will then teleport to that trap that should still be up and then hit that player on that side. The next trap is the window trap. These can be found anywhere from the shack to your jungle gyms to your LT walls. The hag will decide which side of the window is most likely for a survivor to the vault through and they will place it on the location that the survivor will land in. Survivors will generally either panic and vault straight back over or they will just continue to run the toll normally. So it's very similar to the standard pallet trap. 
Next up we have the common hook trap, which is when a survivor has been hooked, the bag will just place a trap around underneath it. The way to counter this, obviously, is just to be patient, run towards it, and then start crouching within a nearby vicinity, and hope that you don't set it off. Next up is what I call the shack trap. This trap is central, or just slightly off to one side of the, the shack. This is there to counter all all variables in the shack. This will counter people bolting for the window from either well from either side. It'll stop the running to the uh, the pallet, and they're moving at the choke points. They're kind of coming to main variant, shall we say? The first one is your indoor maps. There's a lot of choke points in indoor maps, as I said earlier. The likes of the game, Larry's, Hawkins, uh, Midwich have a lot of choke points that naturally occur in the corridors. Placing these at corners or in joining routes, really, really strong. These are all high traffic locations, which the survivors are more than likely, if not definitely going to be running through at some point during the game. The next kind of choke point, which I've got listed down here, is what I call hook routes. These are after you have placed one on a hook, or even if it's a, let's say, or say there's a generator nearby. These routes are just locations that you think are high traffic. These are places that you think the survivor is going to run through to get to a certain location, whether it be a hook um, or an objective. If you can put a trap between two locations, let's say the end of a basic pallet loop and the start of an LT wall, let's say, so, so the corner of an LT wall, that in itself creates a bit of a choke point that survivors can run through. If you place a trap in the middle of that, that can be really strong and catch a survivor off guard that wouldn't ordinarily expect a trap to be there. And then we're moving into some less obvious trap locations, and there are a lot more than this. So if you know any more, stick them in the comments below, because I, as a player myself that likes to learn new things, I definitely want to know. And I'm sure a lot of other people checking this video, if they look down, I'm sure they'll be very grateful to know that there is more potential for them to know these locations so check, check them down below in the comments and i'll be very grateful the first one is the side loop trap it's similar in idea to the pallet loop trap which i said at the very beginning of this section the side loop trap is it's a preemptive trap that a uh, hag player will place to counter a looping area most people expect the trap to be placed on either side of a pallet. They won't expect the, the actual the, the end of the long wall of the loop. So the survival will run towards one area of that loop. Think that they're safe, they're just running the killer in a normal manner. The a random trap will um, burst out the ground and they'll be like, whoa, oh damn. They won't expect it, they'll be a little bit caught off guard. So it's strong in its own right. It catches them off guard, it's less obvious so it's less light to be counted by flashlights and the like so it can be very strong but it's also a little bit easier to counter and there you have it guys the official exiled influx guide to how to counter the hag i hope you enjoyed it I hope it was useful to you if it was useful or you think it would be useful to other people please do hit that like button please do subscribe check out some other videos check out the links below to my social medias and my twitch Yada yada yada, usual shtick. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you all. Stay safe out there. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.